Okay, in a previous lesson, we've learned how to read the meniscus of a graduated cylinder. And what we are now going to do is take that piece of metal that we also uh, check the mass on in the triple beam balance, and we're now going to use that to determine what its volume would be in a 100 milliliter graduated cylinder. Some things we should do when we first pick up and, and look at a graduated cylinder are, what are the increments going by? As you can see, this one, uh, I guess you can't see the top of it, but it goes up to 100 milliliters up here. Obviously starts at zero. Every one of these major lines is 10, and then there's nine separating individual incremental lines between them. So these lines go by ones, which means if that's where you can be certain to, the ones place, you can therefore make your guess or your best estimate one place further than that. One place further than the ones would be the tenths. So I can then estimate in between each one line to find out where that meniscus is and give my best tenths place estimate for my uncertainty place. So you can use what we call, you know, a little meniscus reader card or not. That's personal preference when you get eye level and look. Um, but we can definitely tell it's above the 50. We can definitely tell it's above the 51, the 52, the 53. The bottom of that meniscus is certainly above the 53 and it's certainly not the 54. It is somewhere between 53 and 54. Now, I don't know if my uh, webcam is perfectly on the meniscus or not, it's pretty close. Uh, when I'm eye level here, I can see that it's closer to the 53, the bottom of the meniscus, than the 54. Um, so it's below the halfway point. I think it's, a, my opinion, my estimate is it's 0.3. So I'm going to record 53.3 as the volume of my graduated cylinder. I then, you know, I have on my own paper uh, a, d a data table listed where earlier I found the mass of the metal to be 57.88. Now I need to find the volume of the metal. Well, in order to do that, it's an irregular shape, so I'm going to have to use what's called displacement of water, which is why I re just read the volume of the graduate cylinder, and it's 53.3 milliliters. If I then read the volume of the metal and the cylinder after I put the metal in, it will be higher than 53.3, which then if I subtract, will give me the volume of the metal by simply subtracting, that'll cancel the cylinder's volume. And then I'll have volume of the metal. So what I need to do now is place this uh, piece of metal into that cylinder, not have it splash. So I clearly cannot just lift it up and drop it in there. I might break the bottom and I'd splash the, the water all over. So I need to slide it in carefully and not have the water splash and then read the next meniscus. So I'm going to tilt the graduate cylinder, slide it in pretty slow so it doesn't break the bottom again. Usually what we do then is tap out, lightly tap to get rid of any air bubbles that have collected. You can now see I have the metal sitting in the bottom of the cylinder and the meniscus now, it real fast quick glance sure looks like it's at 60 and a lot of students will be a little bit lazier and will just quickly write down oh 60. well when i get eye level and i look i can see that the bottom most point of tangency of that meniscus is ever so slightly below the 60. now if it was right on the 60 i would put 60.0 because i'd be saying it's exactly on the 60 not below it not above it but i can just barely see the center of it minimally below it. So it would then be above 59, below 60. So I would put 59.9 milliliters down as the volume of the metal and the cylinder. 59.9. I then do my subtraction and come up with 6.6 .6 milliliters. I guess I would have milliliters there. And then I'd move up my 6.6 .6 milliliters to complete my data table that you would have in your lab notebook. That would be how to determine the dense, or excuse me, the volume of your metal by displacement of water. Typically, you might want to do that, like I was just about ready to say, when you're determining and trying to find the density, which will be in our next lesson.